Today I have uh, decided to go to uh, a little secret, secret um, camping location, uh, which um, by Sarah, Sarah B, Cello Sarah. Uh, she dubbed it uh, Pat's Place because uh, uh, Pat used to come here quite a lot, uh, and there's also a little uh, book here to sign, which was uh, left by my mate Twiggy. So I'll, uh, I'll get that out later and sign it. As you can see, the weather is absolutely atrocious. It's just constantly raining. The winds are supposed to be quite heavy tonight. They're not too bad at the moment. A little bit shielded here, I think. Uh, but I bet up on, up on Kinder and Derwent Edge, I think they're probably a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more tasty. Uh, in terms of the pitch, I think I'm gonna go here. Um, flattest spot to go and uh, I brought the stone glacier out with me again tonight uh, I was contemplating bringing the uh, Dustin X mid but I wasn't too sure how high these winds were gonna get so I thought I'd best best be safe and sorry I see what Sarah was talking about in her last video something uh, <laughs> something certainly uh, bit the dust here that's for sure Uh, backpack wise today I bought the uh, Exped uh, 45 Lightning, uh, it is actually water resistant which is a good thing because it's absolutely soaked so I'm interested to see if anything inside is actually is, is wet. spot stone glacier just about fits um, yeah it's a bit of a bit of a tight squeeze I think the tent's probably a little bit a little bit too big to be here you could kind of do with a one-man tent uh, but it's fit nice and snug um, hopefully not too skew with right my uh, hands are going all crinkly because uh, they're soaking wet luckily it's not too cold, um, but it's cold enough for my hands to be freezing. <laughs> um, I think the temperature tonight is going to be around 
five six degrees so that's uh that's uh, balmy compared to what what we have had um but it's going to be i think wet and windy for the whole night and you can see over in the distance there it's just uh yeah, murky murky loads of mist loads of clag i had thought about going up onto uh kinder scout uh tonight which would have been good fun uh but i wanted to wanted to check out this uh this location and uh, get the book signed um, so it's probably a, a good one to a good one to do it on right let's get in the tent and let's get everything set up and then try and dry off a little bit because as you can see I am soaking Soaking wet already. <laughs> Hope you're nice and dry on the inside. So one of the nice things about this tent is uh, the different pitching options that you've got. The, the, the traditional way of pitching this tent is, is actually uh, in a first. But you can also pitch it uh, with the fly attached, um, which is really useful in conditions like this. Uh, and you can also detach it from the uh, the web truss sleeve, um, which means in windy conditions it, it, it detaches the inner, so you can keep the inner down put the poles up and then individually uh, attach um, the inner to the, to the pole structure so it just helps with the uh, stability in, in the in the wind door closed. Ugh. Everything's soaking wet. Luckily my waterproof's kept me dry for the most part. So I've got my uh, Vivo Barefoot with me um, which actually that is pretty much all I use when I hike now. Excuse the absolute state of my uh, new haircut. Um, so uh, yeah these I've got various different versions of the Vivo Barefoot. I can never remember the model name, so I'll put it on the screen somewhere. Um, these particular ones are uh, waterproof. So the other pair of, of boots that I've got for the Vivo Barefoots are not waterproof, they're water resistant. They're both leather, but these are, these are properly waterproof and my feet are bone dry. Um, had I worn my other ones, they probably would have been slightly, slightly damp. Not, not soaking wet or anything, just slightly damp because it just uses the, the natural uh, leather as a water repellent um, whereas uh, yeah these uh, are act actually properly waterproof sealed etc etc so I tend to use these if the if it's conditions are potentially that I'm gonna get wet feet oh it's actually quite warm in the tent um, temperature is so much warmer tonight than it has has been um, which is quite nice uh, so yeah, once you're out of that wind, it's actually quite nice. Uh, I bought some trekking poles. The only reason I really bought my trekking poles was um, in case I wanted to attach them to the tent in either vestibule to give it a bit of extra support. But based on the conditions so far, I don't, don't think I need to. Uh, so interest, interestingly, uh, the bottom of this bag uh, that I've put inside the um, Nyla Flume pack liner has actually got a bit wet at the bottom so uh, yeah obviously I guess because the bag uh, set on the floor uh, has, has actually soaked through um, the X-Ped is actually supposed to be water resistant the seams aren't sealed um, but you know obviously there's a, a limit which is why personally I always think it's a good idea to have some kind of pack liner um, obviously you can use a bin bag if you wanted to you can use a, a dry bag which is what I started to do actually I, when I first started I started using a dry bag but I prefer these like, Nala Flume pack liners 
and you can buy them from various places and you can normally get them in like packs of three they're not that expensive they last for ages uh, and they they just keep your stuff dry oh well i feel a bit more uh, a bit more human again now <laughs> got all my all my down stuff on my little head thing on uh, I'm just going to get my sleep system set up. Uh, I've got my Enlighten Equipment quilt, Nemo Tensor, Extreme Conditions. That combination should keep me nice and warm tonight. Right, dinner for tonight uh, is I bought some pasta. So I just bought this little um, lunchbox style thing. And uh, I've got some uh, pesto sauce in here, which has leaked a bit. Uh, got a bit of parmesan. Uh, I've got some pre-cooked chicken. Um, so that, yeah, um, I can just try and warm this up a little bit, but I can eat it cold if I need to. And then uh, just a little pesto. Let's open up the tent in a minute. I think it stopped raining, which is good. I can get this get this made quickly before it starts piddling down the rain again. Got a few staves now, but I always do tend to come back to the jet ball. Uh, drink, I've got uh, some Ultra Phase. Now, um, this is my this is my favorite beer. It's made by um, North Brewing Co. And they've just gone out of business. They've just gone bust which I'm absolutely gutted about, which means I probably won't be able to get this in the future. So I've bought uh, a lot of cans of it from my local Tesco. And I'm just gonna keep buying loads and getting a stock of them. <laughs> because yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get them for much longer. I'm devastated about that. Still nylon, good luck. Yeah, gorgeous view of Sheffield from here. Hopefully the rain stays away, I'll go and go outside and have a look. I've also brought some wine with me. I may or may not drink this in this little, this little wine pouch, which I showed in my last video, and it's got the temperatures of what the wine should be at. But I, think, um, I think it'll be quite cold <laughs> at the moment, so I'll have to warm, warm that up. And uh, as a special treat, uh, I bought some hot toddy as well. And I pre-made it this time, so um, I didn't have to bring all the stupid ingredients. So all I need to do is add some water to it. Yay me. Oh, it's nice that it stopped raining. I don't, think it's, I don't think it is forecast to rain much tonight. I'm hoping if it, if it stays clear and it's just... Just a bit of wind. I have to say the wind's actually not too bad at the moment. Well, I've got to quit that pasta for 11 minutes. Probably should have bought some kind of quick cut pasta stuff. Which I didn't, I didn't even think about. I don't know why. You get quick, quick cut pasta? I don't know. I know you can get quick cook rice. Quick cook rice. Hmm, not sure about that. Alright, whilst that's cooking, let's go and have a look outside. So there you can see uh, Sheffield. Amazing view of Sheffield. Really amazing view of Sheffield. It probably didn't come across very well on camera, but it looks it looks awesome. Amazing how close this is to the city. God, it's freezing cold outside. Oh, the. Uh, Rain, it's just that, that really fine wet rain. 
<laughs> gets you soaked. It's like, oh, just, just go straight through you in that wind. Once inside the tent, it's fine, but yeah. <clears throat> Glad to get this pasta cooked so I can zip the tent up and start chilling out. So I'm done. That was a quick 11 minutes. Pop that in there and see if I can just uh, sort of warm this chicken up a little bit. And, uh, pop it into the pan. And get the pesto added in. I'll do with that. Throw that in there. I don't. I don't want to mess the pan up too much because I want. I need to boil some water for the hot toddy. I don't want hot toddy smelling of chicken. Which might already do to be fair. The pesto added in. Annoyingly, I uh, I left my spork at home. Honestly, every wild camper brought my spork out with with me, regardless of whether I needed it or not. And uh, yeah, the one time I definitely actually need it, uh, I haven't flipping got it, so I have to use this jet ball spoon, which is a bit. A bit fiddly to be honest, but hey, hey. Parmesan cheese. Oh, right. Fluffy socks back on. And down slippers or down booties back on. Oh, got everything zipped up now. So try and keep some, try and keep some warmth, in, warmth inside this tent. Whilst I'm eating my massive pasta dish. Mm, it's quite nice. It's basically it's just a wholemeal pasta. I tend to have that over white pasta because it's got more nutrients in it. Well, it's got some nutrients in it, whereas white pasta tends to be stripped of all of its uh, nutrients in the in the um, processing. Just some chicken in here, some pesto, parmesan cheese. You don't even need any salt and pepper, really, as the pesto seasons it well. Mm, nice. Right, you don't need to see me eat this. Dessert, some uh, <clears throat> intense orange chocolate apparently. Some, normally when I go camping I bring some kind of really delicious kind of, uh, not saying that this isn't delicious, but some like cake or yeah pastries or something really 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 naughty uh, with me but I do find as I'm getting older I am now well, I'll soon be 46 or, um, in April and as I'm getting older my sleep is getting worse and things that make my sleep even worse are things like you know really sugary foods um, it really messes with my sleep and, and alcohol um, can't really help that one tonight um, although wine doesn't do, well a small amount of wine, uh, red wine, it does actually help my sleep. Um, it's some of the ingredients in it and the melatonin that's in wine does, does seem to actually help my sleep, uh, but only if it's a little bit, if it's too much, then the alcohol kicks in and then I get a problem with sleep and alcohol. Um, so I thought tonight, well, I'll bring some, I'll bring some food that's not um, too unhealthy, so hopefully it won't spike my blood sugars too much. Uh, I've got some dark chocolate, so hopefully that that shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, the the alcohol um, probably isn't a good thing, but um, at least I'm cutting down on, out on some bad things. And hopefully I'll have a not so bad night's sleep as what I do normally have. One of the other nice things about uh, Pat's place is it comes with a, a really good 4G signal, uh, so uh, yeah, I can watch uh, a bit of YouTube, which is which is nice. So. I'm just watching a bit of, bit of YouTube. It's um, 
a little bit later I'm gonna I'm gonna try and read some of uh, of this. I've, I haven't got far left to go on it actually. I've only got I've only got that that much to go. So um, this is a really good book uh, if you're looking for uh, a good good read. Uh, the Salt Path I can I can recommend. If you're into hiking and wild camping, you probably already know about this book. Um, but yeah, it's I highly recommend it for a read. I wouldn't normally bring a, a book when I'm um, going out for a hike in a wild camp, but because it was such a short uh, hike that I came on, uh, the added weight and space wasn't, wasn't really an issue. Right, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the book. Quite excited. So, um, this book here was uh, left by. Uh, oh. Well, there's a, uh, a Canon lens in here. Obviously, someone left that behind. Um, so this book was left by my friend uh, Mick, aka Twiggy Escapes. And um, yeah, anyone that knows of, of this location uh, can can leave a little leave a little message in here. Um, so. A little bit about the a little bit of the history of this location. Um, it was, I believe, it, it was Patrick Dickinson that, that found this location, um, or at least he, he was the one that you know first started wild camping here many many moons ago. He's, he's actually got a video where he uh, wild camp here uh, a few weeks back. I'll put a link link to that here. Um, and then many people or some people say many people people that then have either managed to find the spot there's never been Patrick's never said exactly where this spot is but people have obviously found it over time whether it's through hearsay whether it's through just exploring and piecing things together and finding it um, and uh, yeah um, a few few people have uh, uh, a few people have Come along and uh, yeah, left left their messages. So let's let's see uh, see what we've got. So obviously Twiggy Twiggy's the first entry in here. So he left an entry on Friday the seventeenth of November, twenty twenty three. Uh, I won't read out what what's what's in it because if you do manage to find this location or get tipped off by someone, then uh, you can you can read them for yourself. <laughs> So Sarah's the second ent entry. So uh, a couple of days later, uh, three days later. So Sarah B was here. Um, Patrick Dickinson is the next entry. So ten years ago, ten years ago was uh, Pat's first camp here. A few people, a few people I, I don't, I don't know. Mr. Paul Messner, left one, 12th of December, 2023. Andy Rag. <laughs> Bit of an angry uh, message. Stop giving away these secret locations on YouTube. I won't be giving the secret location away on this YouTube channel. But who wrote that actually? Quite a few entries in here. That's quite surprising. Quite a few people seem to know about it. Simone, uh, Simone and Laura mentioned a few times here. Right, and that's it. So I'll be the next one. So I'll uh, I'm gonna have to have a think about what what's right. So uh, I'll uh, I'll have a think about that one. And uh, pop a little message in there. I feel quite honoured. Uh, right, I think I might make a hot toddy. Beer's pretty much empty. So yeah, let's get the hot toddy on the go. Oh, it's nice and warm underneath there. <laughs> Look at it now, it's cold. Right, hot toddy. Hot toddy. So, I've, um, I've pre-made the hot toddy. It's a good job of a rat bang cling film, so it's leaked a bit. Uh, so basically, uh, it's uh, brandy, 50ml of brandy, 
uh, put two tablespoons of honey, you can put a bit more in three if you want, and then uh, juice of quarter of a lemon. So that's the hot toddy, and then um, you just put a splash of water. So I just need to boil a little bit of water. Um, and then, yeah, it just warms it all up a little bit. And you can warm it up even more afterwards as well. I want it a little, little bit warmer. So I'll probably boil the water, put it in, but I'll probably uh, just pop the, the, the um, cup uh, in the in the pan of water, put a bit more water in there, and then, uh, yeah, heat it up. Ooh, that smells great. Alright. So basically we just put a bit of uh spl oh. Sorry. splash of hot water in there. Um, and then I might just there's a little bit of water left in the bottom of the pan, so I'm just gonna pop that in the bottom of the pan for a second. Just get that nice and hot. Nice, I get everything closed up, get my boots off and stuff. Right, there we go. One nice steaming hot toddy. <laughs> that wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, right, so the wind started to pick up a bit, so I've just uh, attached the trekking pole. Uh, yeah, so I've just uh, attached it to the attachment points up here, and then that just gives it uh, more rigi rigidity uh, on either side of the tent. So I'm going to do the same now uh, with the other side of the tent, um, and just just to make sure that because uh, I think the winds are due to pick up um, throughout the night. There is actually 40 mile an hour gusts forecast, uh, although it, it's supposed to be around 20, 25, coming up 30 right now, but it doesn't really feel that like 30 mile an hour gusts. You know, I, I really need to get a, um, a wind meter, um, but I, I'm kind of guessing they're kind of more like 20, 20 mile an hour gusts, maybe 25 on the odd, the odd occasion. There we go, nice and sturdy now. So for me, hot toddy, put something in the book, read my book, stop the salt path, and then probably go to sleep. Cheers. Right, there's my little uh, entry left. <laughs> I kind of rambled on a little bit there. Um, gave a shout out to a few people, Patrick Dickinson, Sarah, Mick. Uh, but yeah, it's an absolute honour to be able to uh, add an entry into the book, but I think probably going to need, uh, not long before going to end up needing a, a second book.
it's a it's a very pretty bleak morning. It's uh, showers. It's cold, and uh, yeah, it's pretty windy. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be uh, hanging around here for too long. I'm going to get uh, packed up and head back to the car, go and get a, a coffee from somewhere. But yeah, I had a bit of a rough night's sleep. My watch said I slept for about three and a half hours, which is, isn't great. Um, so I might have to have a nap a bit later. Um, I was perfectly warm during the night, really, really warm. Uh, I was quite comfy on the Nemo Tensor Extreme. Uh, so no, no issues there. Sleeping pad didn't, didn't go down either, so it's looking good. Just looking at the uh, stunning view of uh, Sheffield. You do really get a cracking view of it here. Again, it probably doesn't come across on camera, but if you ever do come to this spot, you'll uh, know what I mean. But yeah, it's been lovely to visit this spot and uh, see Pat's place. Uh, I've loved it. Shame about the weather, but it's a problem when you don't have, when I don't live that close to the peaks and I don't have um, all the time available in the world and obviously it costs me quite a bit of money to get, get up here. Uh, it's about half a tank of petrol for me to get up here and back. You know, that's, that's 20, 25 quid. But, you know, you can go to the cinema, you can rinse 20, 25 quid. A couple of drinks down the pub, 25 quid. So, yeah. It's worth it. Right. I am going to get myself packed up. And then I am going to, uh, going to head off. Before it starts piddling down with rain. Sealed up properly. Don't any water getting in there, ruining it. So normally with these, I uh, I tie them up. So then, so they don't get all tangled up. So I, I do them up in a, I don't know what you call it, but, <laughs> but uh, basically you just you wind it up and, you know, you make sure that it doesn't doesn't get all tangled. But as I'll be getting this out when I'm home and I'll be uh, drying it out, um, I'll do it once it's once it's all dry rather than faffing about doing it now, doing it now. So really liking these carbon tent stakes. They go on the ground really easy, and. Um, yeah, they're really light and obviously they're really tough. Big issue with them is they, they won't bend, but they will crack. So something you have to be aware, wary of with, with them. I could leave the uh, inner attached uh, if I wanted to, but I've just got to get it off at home. So it's not too windy.
Anybody who watches my channel knows I love the uh, my stone glacier skyscraper. It's uh, 10.65 mil DAC poles, mighty beefy poles. When you're out in the field, this <laughs> never goes back into its stuff sack <laughs> the way you want it to. Um, and to be fair to Stone Glacier, they do provide you with a a, a good sized stuff sack. It's not that that tight, but <coughs> excuse me, if you do get it wrong, uh, then yeah, it can be can be a bit awkward. Making a right bodge of this. It's gone in. Not too bad. Grass all over it. Great thing about this XPED Lightning, uh, although it's only a 45 litre. Um, the fabric does have some give give to it because it's not Dyneema or uh, Ultra fabric, or so so it, it it does have some stretch, and you really do I do feel like for a 45 liter it's quite a generous 45 liter. I've had uh, you know 50 liters bags that that you know I struggle to fit more content than this. This this does seem to fit content in quite quite well. I have to say. So I have planned to do a review on the XPED, but I think I'll wait until the weather's a bit nicer. I'm sure I'll have it out in the summer. It's just too wet and cold to be doing reviews like this. And the bag's soaking wet as well. But it's got this, uh, got this top strap here and it's this little buckle. Just attaching it, cinch it down, which does an okay job. And it's got this compression system. A couple of buckles either side it is a bit fiddly to use, but but it does the job. Keeps everything nicely compressed down. See, they do stretch quite a bit, so that's quite handy. Right, all packed up, obviously, goes without saying, leave no trace. I put the book back with my little comment in it. So yeah, it's a, it's a cracking little space, this. Right, I'm gonna hit the road. I'm gonna sign off here. Thanks for joining me to, uh, Pat's place, a little uh, secret wild camping location in the in the Peak District. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be giving out the location of this. As always, stay safe, keep on trekking, and I will see you on the next one.